I'm filming this lady's like documentary. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm not filming it. I'm directing it. Okay. But uh, it's it's pretty cool to like see uh, like like kind of what you were saying. Oh yeah. Involved in other people's like, oh, yeah. in the world and and uh, I just kind of sit back and I'm just like, all right. Well, you know, shoot this, shoot yeah. this, shoot this. But uh, yeah, it's very like it's cool to to just see you know like being on a um a, like a podcast set and yeah. stuff like three two. Did you have to like, go to school for all this? No. YouTube. It just, oh, YouTube. <laughs> okay. YouTube University. YouTube <laughs> University. At least I'm not wearing a gray shirt. Bro, so, <laughs> so the gray shirt I wore, was that last episode? Two, Two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Whatever that was. There's a part where I get up and I had to cut it out of the edit. You saw the West Bro, my back <laughs> yeah. was crazy. I was like... Nah, the jokes yeah. should write themselves sometimes. <laughs> no, no. Nah, don't 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 uh, edit out your shit. jokes. I, <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: it's just us, 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 us. Just us pod, episode seventy three. Mm-hmm. I am Fabian, my co-host Dennis, and we have a special guest for you all, Mrs. Christy Coleman. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad to have you. So, um. How was everyone week? Let's start there. Uh man, the week was interesting, man. Um I actually have a couple stories to tell, man. A, a couple little spectator stories. So I'm in the Galleria, third floor, kind of where that Starbucks is, right? Mm-hmm. I go to the Starbucks, give me a little drink or whatever, and as I'm waiting, you know there there's like a fragrance store right right there. And people be out there. I think those dudes are worse than the guys that are trying to clean sneakers in the middle of the store. The of the mall, <laughs> right? like yeah. They are aggressive. <laughs> so I'm just watching, whatever. Um, I got my AirPods in, but I see. You know how you see something about to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Pause real quick. Just, yeah, just pause this. So there's a guy and his girlfriend. They're walking through. And they're... I would, it, I would say, so the dude is black, the chick is maybe Hispanic of some sort, right? But they're very um, skater, grunge. Okay. Yes. okay, okay, I got you. So as they're walking, they're in deep conversation, bro. And the dude is just, like, trying to push on them. And the guy looks at him, and he goes, can you just leave us alone? We're trying to have a conversation. <laughs> bro, the guy working in that store goes, Fuck you, you fat motherfucker, this, this, and that. You rude bitch. And this. I just look, and I'm like, you know me, bro. I love this kind of shit, right? So I'm just <laughs> watching. And the dude just, like, it was so upsetting because I know in my head, if I'm with a girl that I'm talking to or in any woman, bro, like, you got to look like a man in that point, yeah. at that point, right? Bro folded. Bro was like... Hey man, you know, I'm just saying, you know, we're in a conversation, this, this, and that. And the girl is just looking at him, and maybe this is just my perception of, of the situation. The girl's just looking at him and she's just she just looks disgusted. <laughs> like you ain't do nothing. <laughs> at least cuss his ass bro. back out. Man. No, fuck I you, was, motherfucker. She, <laughs> she even protected. She was like, look, oh, where's homeboy at? Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah. that was one. Um and then uh, there's another, I was at a gas station off uh, Cullen, right there in Sunnyside. I go in there. Don't I have a question. Okay, okay. you're right. Don't, don't right. ask okay. me no questions. All right, okay. So I'm in there. <laughs> I want to know a question. <laughs> this ain't my first time in this store. Right? Okay. You just need to stay away from hey, this area, hey, man. But, like, like, okay. Anyway. I'm wondering if you're looking there, for it or is it finding you. <laughs> there's other stories that are in this store that is also like gold, but this one in particular. So I go in there, give me a drink or whatever, and uh, I'm in line. And again, AirPods in. I, you know, I've been like, bro, I don't want no nothing unless it, it's popping off in front of me. That's not safe in those areas. But listen, I'm listening. I'm listening. But I'm also watching. Okay. Right? And like I said, if it pops off in front of me, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I'm right there. Bro, this popped off right in front of me. <laughs> so there's a dude in front of me. He's got a little root beer in his hand, right? And, you know, it's, it's a little warm outside this day. So inside the store is a little tart. 
my guy, he's a little tart, right? <laughs> so I, I'm like, all right, and I'm, you know, you could kind of see his body language. He's a little pissed off about something, whatever. We standing in line, and the line is right in front of the door. The door opens up, and this is when I had to hit the pause button, right? So the door opens up. Hey, mate, uh, he said some other words. I will not be using. <laughs> but uh, he hey, nigga. Like, there you go. <laughs> uh, I heard you was in here on the slot machines. He looks at me and goes, yeah. Where the fuck's my $50 at? <laughs> He's like, man, I ain't putting them but little $5 in there, $10 in there, this, this, and that. Okay. That's $10 you could pay towards your debt. They just start going at each other, like just rah, 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 rah. And I'm just sitting right there. Bro, no bullshit. They may be two feet. <laughs> watch, watch, like the whole thing, the whole thing, <laughs> and I realized like I just really enjoy watching people, bro. And you know yeah. what? What I'm gonna enjoy when you get hit by a straight bullet. Hey, man, I'm gonna be in the hospital. Like, like yeah. remember, you remember that episode of Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Yeah. And oh, with Carlton. Carlton, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> give me the gun. <laughs> like I'm being there. Like I told you. <laughs> Flipping that, flipping that stuff. Up. Yeah, like what, what is going on? You just but you know sitting but, in danger. But but. In my defense, bro, I, again, it's not that I go out looking for this stuff. Yeah. That's, I One, mean, okay, the, the bomb situation <laughs> was in Third Ward. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, my the, God. That's crazy. A couple Different episodes day. ago. Okay. You, okay. I'm going to watch that. Yeah, you'll, find, you'll see me in a green Nirvana shirt. Okay, yeah, gotcha. watch that one. <laughs> Um The sunny side one, like, those, okay. All right, you could argue. They in the hood, blah, blah, blah. But the Galleria? Come on, bro. Yeah. <sighs> Still, like. You've 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 gotten to a point in your life where you don't have to be in those areas, bro. I'm listen, listen. <laughs> like you know, anyway, how was y'all? I feel you. I feel you. I gonna lie. Sometimes I'm a little guilty. I I'll watch people. Like yeah. I'll kind of I don't know why. I'll just sit there and I'll be like, it's almost like getting a natural mm -hmm. natural reaction versus like a scripted one yeah, or something yeah. that we see. I'll be like, okay, what's gonna happen next? Now I may stay two or three feet back, but I'm gonna watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a people watching too, but I, I try not to go to those areas if I don't have to. I'm yeah. from those areas, so I know what's what's happening. Oh, what to expect. See so yeah, no, I'm not gonna be there. So how was your week, man? My week was great. Um it was freeing. Okay, y'all. Let me tell you I learned a lesson. Okay. Okay. It was pretty good. So what I learned I freed myself. I feel like I freed myself from like the idea of, because um, I felt like I, I was putting myself in this bondage of like what I thought, like this ideal world. So like, mm -hmm. like everybody I connected to, any situation I would be in, it would just be the idea of what I think it should happen or the idea of how the type of relationship should go or mm -hmm. the idea of like, I was living this ideal world and I felt like after I was watching one of these um, like podcasts or something, it was making me think that like, my idea and the reality didn't couldn't live in the same box. Mm. Like the idea and that reality. So like for me, it was like, dang, like I kind of like was being like almost like selfish a little mm. bit because I was like trying to put this person or this situation, this like, you know, in the perfect way that I felt like it should be not even like accepting it for what it is. Like looking at it for like it's it's blue. Don't try to make blue red. Yeah. Like it's literally blue. Except blue for what it is. Except red for what it is. And I felt like it took me. I, like I'm 31, right? So it took me a long time to get to a point to where I didn't have to live in no, in that like box. So I just felt like I freed myself. Like you know what? You just being you. That's just who you are. Mm -hmm. That's just who you are. Yeah. That's just who you are. Like self awareness is beautiful, that's, isn't man, it? Man, I feel like I was put yes. <laughs> self awareness yes. is beautiful, okay. and there's a saying that goes, um, oh, "I just had it because of what you said." It's sort of like, sort of like, oh, I lost it. I knew what I, I knew what I, the saying was. I'm gonna find it again, but it's it's kind of like, you know, most women have this fairy tale of certain things, right? And it's like, you, your idea of what this man should be for you can only be for you, right? Correct. I can't live up to your expectation because it's the idea that you have for me. Yeah. I can't do that because that's just not who I am. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you're going to let yourself down every single time. Like you said, if you create these ideas of how every relationship supposed to go, once you go into a relationship, like this relationship right here, right? You come to this part. 
if you had this idea and this big expectation of what this is, and then you let down, is that our fault? No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you. Yeah, right. I, you know what I mean? So I get it. That that is very freeing. Like, free yourselves. I cannot be, or anything cannot be, just because you think it to be. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Just because that's how you thinking doesn't mean that it's gonna go that way or it's gonna be that way. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that was my week. That's good. I had a I had love a cool week. week. I had a good week. Uh very normal. Work, football with my kids. Went outside a couple times. Very normal. Got drunk. Shouldn't have. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I should not have. But a very, very, very normal week for me. And I'm here the, the best part of my week to me. Um, but let's get into uh, Miss Miss Coleman. Okay. Bro. Okay. Entrepreneur, uh, book book writer. Yes, I'm an author. Author. Um, yeah, I'm a filmmaker. Filmmaker, all of these things. Let's let's get into does it all. Does it all. Does it, does it all. Like. Also, <laughs> no, also, I don't know how to fix oh. car. <laughs> also, she brought us gifts. Yeah, I got some gifts. Gift she, yeah, she brought us gifts. She did. Yeah, I do want to mention that this is the. You said that it says hair beard boom, but you can use it for, for your hair. Obviously, I have hair. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Yes. We love gifts, by the way. We love I, gifts. I told her that. Before the camera yeah. started, I was like, oh, we love guests that are on time. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and she also gave us a soap bar. Yes. Yeah, and I soap. love trying. I'm a skin person. I'm a skin guy. You can I, tell. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. You can thank tell. you. That See? See? That means more. You, you know what I'm saying? Guy. I'm a skin guy, so I am going to try this. I appreciate that. Well, yeah. My ignorant ass. So, like... <laughs> This ain't just for. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. bad, bad. All right, all right. So thank you, so thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's that. funny. <laughs> I get that all the time though. <laughs> and, and they ask the same way. So is it um? <laughs> <laughs> is it, I can. I can. You know, it's for the lighter it's, skin. Right? Is it, which way does it go? <laughs> uh, so, what would you like to talk about first? Would you like to talk about the journal? Would you like to talk about the entrepreneurship? Um, uh, the filmmaking. How would you like to start this thing off? I would. Uh, I guess I'll tell y'all my my entrepreneur um, journey. Yeah, let's do that. And um, and then it kind of leads into like why I wrote the journal. And okay, stuff like that. I love it. Um, so honestly, entrepreneurship started for me at sixteen. Wow. So um, now I didn't have an actual business, but my mom, she was a hustler. Okay. So I would see her go from like waking up at six a.m. Um, and she would work the business from 6 a.m. to 2 or up uh, to get us uh, have a uh, cook dinner and, and breakfast by 4 a.m. Uh, 4 a.m. Um, before she went to work. And then by 2, she ended up uh, getting us out of school. And then by 6 from 6 p.m. to 2, she was back at another job. So she just like, hey, Chrissy, get this out. Get this out for your brothers. Get this out. Make sure you got this done, that done. Mm-hmm. Things like that. So then when she, the business started to grow, everybody was on the phones. I'm 16. My brother's like uh, 14. My other brother's like um, 11. So she, we're like, uh, please hold. Please hold. Really? Please hold. She, and then like the phones be ringing and she would pass us the phone. She would, hey, just tell him, please hold. I'll be right there. Tell him, please hold. I'll be right there. And I'm like, okay, please hold. Didn't really know what I was doing. But I knew that like I could just watch her, you know, and um, this right after uh, a di- she went through a divorce. So she was kind of like her back was against the wall. Mm-hmm. She was hungry for it, though. Mm-hmm. Like and I seen that hunger in her. And so then from there, she ended up um, starting a business. She went when she went full throttle in the business. I end up uh, wanted to be just like her, but in a way my own self. But okay. I didn't have that like confidence to really be an entrepreneur. So at that time, I, my appendix ended up erupting, and I had to go get emergency surgery. At sixteen. Um. Uh. This is moving forward. So this is like around like nineteen. Like okay. when she actually okay. started the business. Yeah. What, so, so what was so what was her business? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, taxes. Okay. Okay. So okay. she helped people who were in tax debt. Okay. Um, and so moving forward, you know, she did full time with the business and I'm running time. My appendix ended up erupting. So I had to get emergency surgery. Mm-hmm. I passed out at a, at a basketball game. Wow. So at the time my appendix erupted, I ended up, uh, after that I had to, um, go through, you know, like recovery and things like that. Well, my hair started to fall out. So I didn't know what was happening to my hair. Mm. So at that time, my hair is just coming out in chunks and chunks and I kind of was covering it up, so I would put like braids, or I put wigs, or I didn't want people to know I was going through right. it, you know. Wow. So I was just covering it up. 
And so then from there, when I ended up going to um, college, I went to Austin, Texas, uh, went to college, and I was just still kind of covering up the issue. I was really going down there to, like, really find who I was. I just left Houston out of a limb. You know, like, I felt like, um, like, I just, like, I, let me just learn more about me. So I did network marketing. I started to connect with all these different, like, sales people, sales companies, trying to, like, ML, MLMs and, mm -hmm. you know, just different things, trying to, like, find my way in entrepreneurship. And then from there, end up doing small little gigs here and there. Well, my hair was still coming out during that time. And I was like, okay, Christy, like, what are you going to do? Was this a lot later that the hair was um, still coming out? Yeah, so you're talking about, like, two years of me going, my wow. hair going, coming wow. out for a long time. So then. Do you think it was a side effect of the medicine they used? For the appendix, or yeah, so I think it was side effect from the surgery. Okay. Um. The the and then also um anesthesia. So a lot of people said they mm. could have been I could have went through anesthesia hair loss. Mm. Okay. Um or surgery hair loss something in that sense. So I ended up going to I remember this day like not like yesterday I walked into a beauty salon and I asked her again I was like yeah just cover it up like I got little spots and I was like just and so she tried and and she like looked at me she was like yeah I can't do this I can't cover your hair up. And I was like, uh, I need you to do that because it's my identity. Like, you right. you have no choice but to cover this up. She was like, no, I can't. Like, you, it, it, So I got frustrated, and I was like, just shave it off. Just shave it off. I'm going to let it go. She goes, what? I was like, yeah, I'm going to let it go. Just shave it off. And so she ended up taking a, a clippers, and um, I had spots that were thin in here. But you, could, it didn't t you couldn't tell mm -hmm. from the outside, but on the inside, it was, it was damaged. So she took clippers, and she shaved it off. And all, I see all my hair just on the ground, just just coming down. And I ended up going to um, the car, uh, and I just started crying. Like I was like, I didn't know who I was. Wow. I didn't know who I was. I was like, what the hell? What made you make such a rash decision in that moment? Was it like you were you just tired of it? Like what was that? I was hi I was hiding it from myself. Yeah. I was tired of faking it. Okay. I was tired of faking. It. I was tired of faking like I was okay. Like mm. I was tired of faking it. Like. I was just so tired of make of of just covering it up. Like I was like, I gotta do something. Yeah. And so, when she was when she agreed, she, it was a it was a tug of war. Yeah. At first, she wasn't like she agreed to shave my hair off. She literally called her boss. You know, was like, hey, this girl, I just want to make sure I'm not doing nothing to affect her life. Mm -hmm. You know, after this, anything like that. Like she really felt bad. But mm -hmm. I told her, I was like, this is my choice. Right. You don't you don't get a say in my life transition mm -hmm. at this moment. This is what I I'm asking you to do it. Take shave it off. Like yeah. I'll figure it out. Like what you expect me to do? Yeah. Yeah. Grab the clippers and start it myself, yeah. and then be like, okay, finish it for me. Let's. Man. Yeah, it was a tug of war for a while. Then um, I ended up going to uh, uh, I guess you know going through the identity stuff yeah. and I'm wearing a lot of makeup, trying to overcompensate for my beauty now. Mm -hmm. Big earrings, different things like that to try to make myself feel good, try to feel good about myself in any for any way, you know. And so then I was actually in a relationship that ended. Cause of my hair. Wow. wow. Like literally, he literally, like, and I asked him, I was like, you know, did you, would you think he was just like, looked at me like he was disgusted. Um, and you know what's crazy about you just saying that? You always see the jokes on the internet. Mm -hmm. You always see the memes like, mm -hmm. you bring your ass home without no hair and mm -hmm. this shit over with. See and the, see that, we just talked about this before the camera came on, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny to actually sit down and begin to hear people's stories and it'd be real life that we see, yeah. and it actually happened to you. That's crazy. Yeah. It just like that. He was like, "Oh hell no!" Nah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like you the, from the instant look, it was disgust. Damn. Like you could, you could feel this. You know how mm -hmm. you know how you ever looked at a woman that you just like disgusted with. Yeah. She could, you could feel disgust from somebody, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, this." How long were y'all in a relationship? Probably? Um, probably about eight months, nine months. Damn. Mm -hmm. Hair changed. Day. All of that. All that changed, yeah, literally just like that. We just He never liked you anyway. Yeah, already. To I mean, hell with him. Yeah, yeah, literally. To hell with him. To hell with him. So <laughs> moving forward from that, I end up um was like, okay, so you know, went through all that identity stuff. And I was like, you know what, Christy, one day I was I was like, I gotta I gotta get my hair back. I gotta figure this out. Like, what the hell am I gonna do? So yeah, I went to H E B. I kid you not. I grabbed avocado, banana, honey, oil. Uh, olive oil, grapeseed oil, and I started blending, boiling down, cutting up stuff. I started to make, uh, like, the, the, um, was infused stuff from the, actually, avocado um, seed. I started to make rosemary. I started to start making, just mixing stuff. I had them in these little 
to go containers mm -hmm. um, where and then also the stuff had to be refrigerated. Okay. So I would just put it on my hair. I'm like, I'm gonna get my hair back. Like, I'm gonna show the world that everything from the earth works. Like, I don't care. Now, mind you, at this time, I wasn't planning on being an entrepreneur. I wasn't planning on selling hair products. I wasn't planning on doing any of that. I was just literally um, trying to grow my hair back. So right. I was like, hey, this is when a selfish, uh, a selfish initiative turns into something bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and um, that's exactly what I did. I started to just, just, and I was just focused on myself, growing my hair back. My hair grew. Mm. I say it started to grow. My confidence mm. grew. Now, let me tell you, it became a movement. Mm. Like my roommate, she cut her hair off. And she was like, yeah, girl. I'm, <laughs> it, it threw me off. But she actually came home and her hair was all gone. So, and she asked me for the product, the stuff, I, and like all the stuff I was using. So I just gave her all my ingredients. Now, mind the time, I'm not selling nothing. Yeah. I'm just giving it to them. So then people started to see my hair growing back. So I started to give them like little containers and stuff of like what I was making. But mind you, it only had to be refrigerated. So I'm like, y'all, I don't know how long it lasts. I don't even know nothing that like, you know, ingredients on it. It's just a container full of stuff I'm mixing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my hair started to grow back. And then from there, um, my mom, I, now mind you, I still living in Austin. So I would come home and she'd be like, you still making hair products? And she was still running her business and things like that. And I was like, yeah, but I mean, I'm just doing it for fun. I'm not trying to, yeah. you know, save the world or nothing like that. I'm just <clears throat> I'm just doing it because I love people. I love my hair. And so then um, my grandmother ended up getting chemo, uh, chemo hair loss. And my mom asked me one day to bring her the stuff that I was mixing or whatever. And I was like, okay, you know. And so I brought it to her. And um, she ended up putting it on my grandmother. Now, mind you, I didn't know what she was doing. Um, and so then from there, she ended up, um, uh, over time after my grandma passed. So this, her mom, so after she passed, now my job, that went through a whole different form of depression when she passed. But my, my, aside from that, she ended up, um, putting the uh, oil on it. We found out that her hair was going back. Mm. Like after though, we found out after that. So then from there, uh, I didn't want to do anything with the product. I didn't want to do nothing with life. I was suicidal. My grandmother passed. I was like, I cut everything off. I wouldn't care about my hair. I didn't care about nothing. So my mom called me about about four, three, four months later. She goes, hey, I think we should do something with what you're making. I said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, I'm done with the world. I'm done with her. Mama just passed. Um, I'm not doing none of that. I like, no. And she goes, you need to do it. People need to know more about what you're doing. I said, no, I'm not doing it. Like, and um, I don't even see myself as an entrepreneur. Like, what are you right. talking about? Like, yeah. I'm not an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I, I don't even know nothing. I've, she goes, you you know about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm not an entrepreneur. Like, stop calling me as greater. Like, don't call me greater than where I am right now. If I'm depressed, let me be depressed. Like, if I'm mad, so let me sit in that. Like, and she kept trying to, like, you know, like, you can do it. So um, one day I just literally, I guess, I, I don't remember what um, that spark was. But I remember going to her house and just bringing all my stuff. And it was like, here, like, just here. Just, here's all the stuff I make. Here's what it is, like, here. And she literally, uh, I think, I kid you not, probably two months later, I was shocked. Just like when, when my roommate came with her hair cut off, she upgraded everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, like, every product I gave her didn't need to be refrigerated. Didn't wow. need to uh, be, like, she found all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, ended up, uh, I was like, okay. So then from there, we ended up, um, she goes, all right, so what do you want to do? You want to do it? You want to start the business? And at first, I'm thinking we're doing, like, network marketing, what I'm used to doing. So I'm like, yeah, let's just sell other people products. So then I can, you know, I feel more confident then. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to sell myself, like, put myself out there. People going to think I'm trying to do, I don't know. I just didn't want to do it. I didn't, I didn't believe that I could be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. And then from there, um, she goes, no, we're starting a business. And I was like, oh, we are? <laughs> was, uh, we are okay. You know, let's like, was, let's start it. Yeah, I was like, wait, me, you. And yeah. she was like, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I was like, okay. So she was like, so I think KT Beauty Bar, and I was like, bar. I was like, no, I don't know about bar. I was like, I'm more of a boom type of person. Like, I like craziness, wild, fun, free. So let's just do boom, and that's where the name came from. Love it. And yeah, and that's um, and literally from there, y'all, we hustled. We started in the garage. Um, mixing, when I say three years of just buckets of stuff, bottling stuff, getting the labels, going through mistakes of like getting the wrong labels, like labels had to, be, uh, like we didn't know we had to get oil free labels, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So now, yeah. now, now the oil dripping on the labels and all the stuff coming off of it and people complaining that they can't read anything. And now, you know, so wow. going through all those like customer service stuff, I mean, the mentally I was being like beat up cause I didn't know all the stuff it took to really run a business. Right. Um, and then I didn't realize I needed to me be mentally tough, too. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't. Ha I had to be mentally tough 
to do it. Like I was like, so when people coming at me like, well, my order wrong. Where's my order at? Um, people calling like, uh, well, I lost all my hair. Is somebody pulled my hair out? Can you fix it? Like and I'm oh. like, I, I mean, I don't. You know, like I lost all my hair. You know what I mean? But like, I don't know if I can fix it. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so they get stolen. Yeah. I don't know if it works like that. Like, I wasn't robbed for my yeah, hair. Yeah. I don't know if I can Just, make a police report. Yeah, yeah, like it, it did. It did. Oh, you meet people. I like, want well, my hair been gone thirty years, and they expect the oil to work. Mm. You know, in a week. That's and, crazy. You know, well, my hair ain't growing back. I'm like, well, how long have you used? Well, it's been uh, at least six days. I'm like, six days. Like. <laughs> You've been using, you've been perming your hair for 30 years. <laughs> now you say me that, like, so it took me time to get tough, like, to where I had to really, I had to communicate with people, learn how to be like, you know what, you know, it could possibly be this. So let me understand your hair condition. Let me understand this. But I didn't have that type of patience yeah. as, as an entrepreneur. I really didn't. I didn't know what I was doing, y'all. And so then, like, I think it was one day I got, like, uh, these people kept calling, like, telling me all these hair loss stories. And um, and one day I I uh, remember talking to my mom because mind you we also had other childhood issues that we didn't even heal from. Mm -hmm. So whenever people call me and frustrated, I'm bringing up like you know childhood stuff in the midst of me being angry at the fact that I can't help. I don't know what to do with this client. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling her like, well, what do you want me to do with this client? And and she's like, well, I don't understand why you so angry about. It. I'm like, yeah, because you 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 know. And it's like this has nothing to do with the business. Yeah. Like you bringing up stuff that has nothing to do with the business. And so, again, I didn't realize that was affecting business too. Like yeah. me not even like realizing that all the maybe the I didn't even know I had all that built up in me until I we started to get close. Like we started to spend a lot more time together. Mm -hmm. And so then, um, uh, once I had to get, I realized I remember calling with that. I was all right. Well, what do you want me to do with these clients? You know, she goes, we need to learn how to be empathetic and not sympathetic. And I was like, okay, well, what does that even look like? You know, how to be empathetic yeah. um, to their hair loss, you mm -hmm. know? And so, I, and I, I was like, okay, I don't even know what this looks like. So, y'all, I literally was like, okay, I got to I gotta study. I got to learn. And I was like, okay. So, then I started Googling. I started, I Googled, like, six tips of entrepreneurship. And I remember seeing one, study, learn. I'm like, all right, well, that, that, maybe that's what I'm missing yeah. is, you know, studying and learning. So end up getting that certification, the life, the life coach certification, because I literally was like, I don't know how to handle this. Like, I don't know how to handle this, this life stuff that's coming at me. Mm -hmm. So I started to study all that stuff, study and learn, study and learn. Now, when people call me with life stuff, now I'm like, okay, it's your belief system. Now it's the words you speak. Now it's how, now I can really break down exactly what it is that they were going through versus before. It would, it would be like an attack. I would take it as a personal attack because I didn't know how to help them. Um, and moving forward, that's kind of where the book came in. I um, ended up wanting to help people who were going through mental distress from hair loss and mental uh, people who were uh, basically life was beating them up and mm -hmm. taking their hair, and I wanted to help them fight and become like hair warriors. And yeah. so I think once I be stepped into that like warrior mindset, okay, so in order for me to be an entrepreneur, I also need to have a warrior mindset to get through that. I think it's beautiful, you know, every step, that you've shared with us, that you've been through, it helped the next step. Like, it, everything came together because of what previously happened. Mm -hmm. I, I love that about this story. And it had me to thinking about our parents, the generation before them, us, and the kids below, right? We were always taught to, in customer service, stuff like that, speak back, smile when you see somebody, you know, be have empathy. You know, in, they didn't use those words or that vernacular, but they did mold us and tell us. And I'm just thinking about our children and the children that's coming after them, how they come to interviews and how they just show up in real world. Mm -hmm. And they don't show up with empathy. They don't show up with care. They don't care about shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's such a fast-paced world, and I'm just – you know, talking about this because of how you said people will call you and have that right now expectation of, oh, my hair has been gone for 30 years and they want it to be back in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And it all correlates because I've seen these kids. Is it Gen Z? Is that what they call them? Yeah, Gen Zs. The ones out there, our children or the Gen Zs? Yeah. They come to interview in shorts, got tattoos in their face, mm -hmm. and it's like, Okay, I get it. Y'all are the free children. Y'all are the children that's rebellion. Y'all are the children that don't care, but you still have to survive in this world. Mm -hmm. 
And if you don't conform just a small bit, it, it, it's not going to work for you. Yeah, yeah and I, I think what's tricky too, though, is what the new norm is. Yeah. Right? I mean, for us, the norm was, regardless of who it was, if they were an elder, it was yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Right? Uh, there's a lot of people that I know will tell their kids, like, you don't know them. You don't have to tell them yes, sir. You don't have to tell them yes, ma'am. Like, like newer generation. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, the kids that our generation is raising. Yeah, that's basically. crazy. And it's like, okay, you know, I, I don't, again, I don't, everybody's different, right? Like everybody has a different way of looking at things. So I don't ever really question it. But it is interesting because if there's one, two people like that that I know personally, how many other people are out there in the world that are, are the same way? So are we really creating the new norm? Are we molding the new norm to where when we don't see what, Gen Z and Gen A are going to be looking at as what th this world looks like to them. Like, right. you know, what is okay? And, you know, yeah, we might see it as, man, that's disrespectful as hell, but they might see it as, oh, it's just a regular conversation. I mean, and as, and as she said, you know, the mentally tough part of it, that is a form of being mentally tough, mm -hmm. having your own will, having your own mind, being strong-minded, doing it your way. But to what detriment? Yeah. yeah. Like, to what fault? Your own fault. Like, you still have to, because saying yes, ma'am, and no, sir, can also be respect. Mm -hmm. Like, are we not respecting people who are elders? Yeah. Yeah. Do we not say thank you when people open the door anymore? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, that's mentally tough, but it's also stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> you know is. what I mean? It's, it's very yeah. stupid. I um, think they've grown a sense of entitlement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like uh, so. huge sense of entitlement. Like enti because we 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 you think about we're the ones we boost outside. Yeah. You know, uh playing and getting like just really in you know, our grandparents and all of us were but you know, grand even the grandmas nowadays, they and not the grandmas back in the day. Oh, no. they, oh you know, no. now they're not even being called grandma. Shit. They they, they side by side with us. They, they still outside. Yeah, they <laughs> shit. They outside. They side by they side outside. with us. Yeah. They like we I, outside. I they they the, outside. I seen the the a bunch of them last night. Right? <laughs> they not Especially in bed at nine. Yeah. <laughs> they getting ready to go out yeah, at nine. It's uh, crazy. So I did want to talk about um kind of how when you're when you're telling these stories, right? And when you're telling these situations that you've gone through, uh I I'm interested in like cuz it always seems that you find the the door to the next room, like Faye was right. saying, right? Like it helps you get into the next chapter. But are you realizing in the moment that you're going into that next chapter or into that next room or is this more of looking back on it, you're able to see this was the point in which this happened specifically happened and this is what i brought into the next room with me like which one do you get what i'm trying to yeah, ask yeah yeah so honestly i didn't know like okay so tell talking to y'all this is my first time hearing it mm. like so i honestly don't i've never like uh put it into that kind of perspective yeah, i've never put in that in that to that perspective i never did i was just going yeah you know what i mean i'm going with life i'm just yeah. going like i'm you know i'm in the motions of it like i'm bad i'm angry you know i'm and i'm not knowing that this is gonna go to the next step but i'm asking myself that in the process like what is it supposed to teach me like i'm so frustrated i mean i'm trying to like understand what i'm going through so what is this supposed to like what am i supposed to learn like mm -hmm. so i'm not knowing what's supposed to come like what the next project is or something like that but when i'm in that midst of those emotions like you know i'm i'm generally asking myself how do i pull myself out of this like or how do i fight or how do i how do i get out of this and what is what's supposed to come from this like mm -hmm. But I don't know exactly what it is, like you know, like the pinpoint of it. I don't right. know. I just, I just know I want to get out of it. Like, if I know when I was going through depression, I knew I didn't want to be depressed. Mm -hmm. So like, I started to do little things like uh, go outside and put my feet in the grass or uh, do stuff like in the sun and and um, just do little things that kind of like brought me back to earth. You mm -hmm. know, like, but I knew I didn't want to be there. I just didn't know what was gonna come after me. You know, spending. 10 minutes in the sun. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, because I'd be interested, interested to see in six months from now what you opened up with explaining how your week was, mm -hmm. right? In this moment of clarity that you had, what is that going to look like for you in six months? It's going to lead to you, something. You get what I'm saying? Because no, that's what, what I'm saying. Can. So, like, okay, everything see, I, that you... I never would have thought about that. Yeah. Everything that you have explained to us has been, all right, this happened up to this point, and then, boom, this... This moment happened. of clarity was yeah. here. 
up to here, boom, more clarity. Up to here, boom, more clarity. And you're taking all of this stuff that one would call baggage in a sense, right? You're taking all this baggage into the next room, onto into the next state, into the next city, into the your next journey, the next turn that you take in, in the GPS that's, that you that you have in life is taking you. You're taking all of this stuff with you and you're putting it forward, right? Like it's so a beautiful. Months, it's a beautiful thing. See what that looks like. Wow, it's a beautiful I never, thing. I literally never thought about that. It's a beautiful thing because a lot of people, they'll take it as, wait, like damn, the devil is on me, y'all. Like they'll take it as some kind of spiritual warfare that they're losing, yeah. about it that they're losing. But most people don't take it and build something from it, and that's what you're doing. Saying. That's 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 great. So, you get to the point to where you're like, okay, it's empathy. I need to learn. I'm googling. And you get to the journal. Yeah, get to the journal, get y'all. To the journal. So um, once I write the journal out, let me tell you another thing: entrepreneurship. Like I learned, so not everything that bad's happened to me is really trying to like tear me down. Mm-hmm. Like just because it's just because you know it's some bad happened or whatever, trying to tell me now. So this wasn't the original cover for the journal. Okay. The original cover I had for the journal. I'll see it. Um, it I'll did not it. get approved by Amazon. Oh, this wow. is beautiful. So it did not get approved by Amazon. So I wrote the journal. One thing when I was writing the journal, I wanted to take people because my family is, is very mili- military. So um, my I wanted to make sure that I incorporate some of the things I learned, mm-hmm. um, which was like basically my grandfather was still like in this military mode. So he kind of like so I remember like him discussing like the ways that we would or they would like you know prepare for certain things, things mm-hmm. like that. So I kind of wanted to like if, if he always called himself a mountain man. So, like, if I'm able to take people through that mountain man, like, mentality or something, like, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. So, I created these, like, the the first part of the journal was, like, six resources of, like, what it takes to overcome, like, a battle or a war, but I incorporated it into, like, hair loss. Mm. So, like, switching your mindset, like, now you're getting ready for this battle or war for hair loss. So, that's where, like, that, um, like, the inside of that's kind of where it uh, prepares you for that and gets your mind right. But... Um, the original cover for the journal, um, it didn't get approved. So I thought that, like, Amazon was against me, and I was just sitting there like, yeah. they don't want me to win. Like, they just trying to – and I posted it already, like, my journal coming out, blah, blah. And so um, it didn't get approved um, for almost um, – it was about three, four weeks. Ooh. And then – and I kept emailing back and forth, like, what's wrong with the cover? And I'm like, I told everybody was going to release this day and it's not released. So I had to get a new cover. And once I got the new cover, they immediately approved it. And so when I got the new cover, um, I literally didn't, it took me a while to like um, figure out what exactly I wanted to like, where the book was going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is like another testimony day too. Cause I woke up one day and I remember uh, praying one, like last night or the night before that, and I woke up and I was going to go out and sell my products. Well, go out and like uh, talk to people about my products in barbershops and salons and stuff. That was my initial goal. Something dropped in my spirit and was like, uh, go and put your books in bookstores. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm, what? You know, like me put my book in bookstores? Like, there's mm-hmm. no way people are going to like, I'm like, just crazy. I'm like, all right, let me just see. So I'm like ready. Like, yes, yeah, so I bought all my books. And I called these like bookstores. And the first bookstore I called, um, I called him and I was like, "Hey, uh, you know, do you accept uh, consignment books? Do you accept, you know, these books your bookstore?" She's like, "Yeah, you know, bring it in." You know, so I'm excited. I'm like, "Yeah, I brought all my box of books, books in there." And I was like, "Okay, um, you know, like here's my books, blah blah." She goes through it. She like looks through it. She goes, "Yeah, this is not gonna work for my stuff." I was like, "Oh, mm. okay." So yeah, I cough up all my emotions and yeah. stuff, and I grab my book, and I'm like. Ooh, all right, y'all. That's I know, that's what I really wanted to give. I was like, okay, like now I really feel like you know now you know the world against me again. Like, yeah. But it's but it's not the case. Like, but but in my mindset, I'm like, no. Like, okay, Chrissy. I was like, okay, no. Just next opportunity. Just don't don't cry about it. So I ended up calling like maybe 25 bookstores mm-hmm. in Houston. I kept getting no's, kept getting no's. So I I literally remember sitting in my car and it was like, hold it. I'm like. Why you put this in my spirit to do this today if nothing's working out? Mm-hmm. Like this don't even make sense. Yeah. Like like why even ask me to do this? Like why like like why am I why did I write this book? Why did I do all this? It's just it's not it's not working out. Um and uh end up calling um this last bookstore called Chronicles Bookstore. I'm not, I don't know nothing about Chronicles Bookstore. I didn't know that it was I didn't know what type of bookstore it was. I just called. They say hey yeah come inside. 
I get to the bookstore, mind you, it's in this huge, like, um, it's in this huge church called Wheeler Church. Oh, the Wheeler Church? Oh, yeah. yeah. There okay. what? Now, mind you, I've never heard of Wheeler Church, yeah. okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of Wheeler Church. So I get there, I see, like, this pastor on there, and I see all these, like, you know, street signs, mm-hmm. and it says Wheeler, Wheeler, and I'm like, okay, so I'm going in there, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for Chronicles Bookstore, and that lady there was like, yeah, it's back this way. Now, I don't know how, to, I don't know where the bookstore is. I don't know how to get into a bookstore. She lets me in a bookstore. I go inside the bookstore, um, tell them about my book, you know, pitch my book. They accepted my book, um, and now that book is in Wheeler Bookstore. Hmm. When I put it out on Amazon Prime, I end up meeting with this marketing, um, well, I end up finding this marketing company. They helped me market my book, and it went to Amazon Bestseller. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, and so that's how far the journal is. I'm going now. I'm in two bookstores, but again, I didn't think I could do it at first yeah. until like I just was like, okay, let me just let me just believe it for like mm-hmm. a second. Like let me just if I just switch my belief system for one second because it's really just about me believing I could do it or not. So if I, if I believe it, yeah. then I, I know I can do it. And and um, but I was so mad the whole day because I had to call. I didn't know, not even I had the call, but it just felt like a, a defeat, mm-hmm. you know, because I was really determined to go in there. Like, my first stop, to sell these books. And I remember sitting in my car, like, oh, I'm so mad. Like, wasted all my energy and time. I drove an hour to this bookstore. Like, oh, I just want to go home and just, like, just <laughs> hang it up, you mm-hmm. know? And I was like, no, what Chrissy just, mm, I just felt like the enemy wanted me to stop, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I just felt that way, like, I felt like I was going to give him joy if I just went home and quit. I was going to give him joy if I just gave up. And I was like, no, I'm not I'm not giving him. I'm, he's not going to get the satisfaction of my – he's not going to get the satisfaction again of, like, me feeling defeated again. Like, he's yeah. not going to get that from me again. So, yeah, and I called. Got in the bookstore. Yeah, I mean, th- this is another, like, really big part of somebody who's waiting for any type of success. Right, understanding that patience is needed, mm-hmm. right? And with patience is there is going to feel like a, there's a lot of defeat because time, right? Like you, when you feel like you lose time, you waste time, you waste energy, you waste gas, whatever it is, it feels like a sense of defeat, mm-hmm. right? It feels like, oh, man, like you're saying, like the world's against me and why am I doing this and yada, yada, yada. Like it's so easy to feel that way, but to understand that, you have to be patient in this, right? Like, everything's not going to be – everybody doesn't hit the lotto the first time they play it, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's a scratch-off, you know, uh, uh, Mega Millions, whatever it is, everybody doesn't get that luxury of, oh, this is my first time playing, I win. Mm-hmm. So understanding, like, yeah, there are going to be things that you have to continue to go through, continue to understand that you have to put – it's literally one step at a time. Yeah, That's the only way to move forward is to continue to put one foot in front of the other – now, if you walk in a big circle, it is what it is. <laughs> but at least you just kept moving forward through it. So, no, I mean, congratulations on that, right? Uh, I think that, to your point, like a lot of people would have gave up. And they would have just been like, all right. Or just it, it took the, you know, the okay of, I made it to Amazon. I'm cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And just been like, all right, all right there's nothing else to do. Nah, there's plenty there's yeah. plenty to do. I mean, and again, you know, that's just a testament to when your gut tells you something, listen to it. Yeah. yeah. The spirit told her something that she listened to it. And also, you you ever see that meme where it says, uh, not what it says, but it shows a picture of two men digging mm-hmm. and one is digging and he has a little bit to dig and he'll make it there, but he leaves. He gives up. He gives up and the other one is like, you know what I mean? And you always, every story that you've told, you never left. You always kept digging. And that's important, you know, in entrepreneurship, in life, in everything that we're doing to get to places that we're trying to get to, you just got to keep digging. No matter how long you've been digging, chunk the axe one more time. That one more time led you to Willow Avenue Baptist Church. Great church, great pastor. Uh, rest in peace to senior. You know he, he passed not too long ago, uh, maybe a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, this months ago maybe. Um, did you get some Frenchies chicken? <laughs> yeah, I love Frenchies. Y'all. I love me some Frenchies. So let's get into um, what it, do you have a favorite part of the journal? Um, so my favorite part of the journal is more of like the hair warrior. Okay. 
So that's like more of like really, um, cause my grandfather always said he was a mountain man. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I bring in my grandfather is cause I was his hospice caretaker. Mm -hmm. So I was his hospice caretaker for two years, the last two years of his life. Okay. So from 27 to 29, the process of me writing in journal, I had to be home by nine o'clock wow. at 27 years old. I had to make my bed up by 7 a.m. And um, while I was his caretaker, I was almost like, I, I was taking, I was supposed to take care of him, but he seen that I was so meant, I, I needed a lot of mental, like, uh, toughness yeah. and structure that, I mean, y'all, let me tell you, it, uh, I'm saying this story because it, it blows my mind. He would he'll wake up before me, okay, on purpose, at 6 o'clock every morning. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, he'll be like, it's time to get up. I mean, like, it's like, Papa, it's like, it was, but my breakfast needs to be made. Yeah. Every morning, nigga, he goes, he goes, don't don't walk out that room if that bed's not made. Mm. I was like, yes, sir. Like, and I was like, military man. Yes, like, I mean, I'm telling y'all, like, grown ass woman. Yeah, and this is definitely. <laughs> I used crazy. to be like, I, and I went from my, I had my own apartment, yeah. you know, like living on my own, gave up my apartment, and 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 I and, and I get my whole, you know, like that that twenty six year old free <laughs> life, and I'm, <laughs> yeah. I come here, I was like, oh my gosh, like so the whole time I'm at home, I had to be home by nine, so I just started writing a journal, and he kept saying, yeah, my mom, like he would just say that, yeah. you know, but he, my grandfather also knew who he was, he knew his roots, he knew his um, he knew his uh, culture from mm -hmm. like his uh, his tribe. He knew where his tribe was from. He knew everything. Like, mm. So he literally would just have me just sit there and just listen to all the historical stories of things he's been through, things he had to overcome. My His dad, and um, he was a farmer as well. That's where a lot of this stuff really originally came from. So we had to eat what we grew. What he mm. grew what he, we ate what he grew. Mm. Growing up, he's had bags of carpets. We'd go to his house and pick it up. And then from there, he just literally uh, just sat there, and I just was writing that journal. And then and that's what I was telling that lady. I'm like, no, I got to do it. My grandfather died, and, and I was his caretaker. And granted, it was his time. But at the same time, I was writing this journal in the midst of him dying. This is going to go further than me. It has nothing to do mm -hmm. with how the maximum of, of, of limit that the journal can go it has everything to do with who it can reach. I've already yeah. given up enough. I've already lost enough. No, it's going to reach more people. And that's, um, and that's, you know, I was just like, I want to reach more. I want to talk to more people about being a hair warrior and really being, being that mindset because it took me almost two years to really, uh, convert to, um, the way almost to the way he was thinking and a lot of stuff didn't make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until after he passed and so now when i'm in life without him because uh, he was uh, he was my dad mm -hmm. so now i'm in life without him um it's more of like okay no my grandfather taught me not to do that or my grandfather like didn't make no okay cool like my grandfather taught me how to be tough like yeah. christy like come on you a mountain woman like do this you know do this but there's moments where i want to break i want to fucking just cry just yeah. be like fuck this shit like i'm tired but then at the same time you're like no you're a mountain woman do this do this yeah. fight you know there's other people that need you to keep fighting and so that's my favorite part of the journal is like like i get to connect with fighters yeah. i get I, did, I get to connect with people that are just like me like we're going through those motions of like tug of war you know that spiritual tug of war of like oh do i want to do this or not want to do this no don't do it and then and but then like you, you meet people that are like fighting with you and because I remember when he when he first passed, um, I just had to, I had to I had to find a community of people. I, I was so lost, yeah, like super lost. A lot of people never knew what I was going through, but I found a community of boxers. So I was I started boxing, okay, mm -hmm. and I started doing yoga. But the only reason I'm bringing this up because like I had to, I was around people that were fighting. Yep. Yeah. Everybody was going through different stuff, and I just started surrounding myself with people that were going through similar things as me. And I didn't feel alone, and mm -hmm. then boom, I chose to be my fighter. So that's my favorite part of the journal is to connect with people that are fighting. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, again, right, like this is, okay, to, to give you a similar scenario would be addiction, mm -hmm. right? So there are people who are addicted to tons of different things. You, this organization is formed called Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, or Narcotics Anonymous, NA, and you get so many different people from so many different walks of life in there. They're not in there just for alcohol. They're not in there just for narcotics. Like, if you have a sex addiction, addiction, you're going in there, right? Because you're you're to your point. It's like, hey, we all have a problem, mm -hmm. but sometimes we all need to sit somewhere to be able to speak about this problem or to be able to get this problem out, or at least feel like you're working through your problem right on the side of me while I'm working through mine, mm -hmm. right? We're gonna get through both of our problems together. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, it's, 
it's one thing to win a game as an individual, but it's another to win it as a team. Mm -hmm. So if all of you are in there as a team, even if one person fails, the other people around them are picking them up. It, yeah. This is now your support group, basically. Exactly. So no, I, I I totally understand that. Like that makes perfect sense, and I think that some people need to figure out what that is for them. Yeah. This is a, this is a great um, segue to talk about. You said you were diagnosed with PTSD. Correct. Um, and your everyday fight with it and, and how you're trying to, you know, navigate through it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that. What were you, you were diagnosed? Correct. So I was diagnosed with PTSD in 2021 after a traumatic brain injury. Mm. Um, I went on a group trip with um, people who I thought were my friends. Mm -hmm. um, I'm smiling because I got to. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I have to. Uh, people who are basically who I thought were my friends went on an uh, uh, island um, and, you know, uh, I don't even know, go deep into the story, but basically when I got to the island, I was hit with a, a rock. So I was blacked out, blacked out. Um, like as soon as you got there? No, no, no. So basically we had a good time. Like it was, a you know, you meeting people, you're around, I'm surrounding these. Uh, it's just going deeper to the story, I guess. It's just like real emotion for me. But basically I was uh, in this group of, with these group of people. Um, and uh, they were from Austin, group of people kicking it with them or whatever. And uh, we were just um, having a good time. Um, and then there was this girl that was on the trip. And um, her boyfriend was on the trip. Her friends were on the trip. Now, mind you, I was on the trip with uh, this guy, couples. It was a lot of couples. I was the only one. I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a good third wheel. Okay. So, like, I can hang out with, you know, anybody, really. So, I could just, okay, cool, I'm going to come. Um, I didn't have a partner there. I ended up meeting and just kind of hanging out with somebody that was on the island. So, cool. We all had a good time. Now, the girl, everybody keeps asking me why she did it or anything. And I said, I don't like to get, like, um, too... Like, I don't understand them. I don't have to get, like, I don't know I don't know the mindset of people, why they make certain choices. But right. So, because I don't know. But one thing I do know is that, like, we just didn't connect. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we wasn't the ones that clicked on the trip. And so. Was um, it, was it, did you feel her spirit? Yeah, I yeah. felt her spirit felt for her sure. Energy. And then, you know, um, her boyfriend make little side comments here and there um, that I just kind of ignored. But not negative. Oh, okay. Towards you, okay. Not negative. So he comments. was he was showing interest in you. Like it 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 just and again I didn't look at it like that because okay I'm not I'm not trying you know how you, you know how like in your mind you're like, like I don't even want to think that way yeah because you know, I don't I, mean? I don't want to yeah 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 I'm not even trying to like you know I'm I, mind you I'm on a whole other island by myself I'm not even trying to let my mind even go there because you know? I don't want this to become what it eventually became exactly I got you so now we on a bus and you know and and I'm you know little side comments and I mind you I could feel her energy so at this moment I kind of like was like. Um, like I'm not even, I'm, I was like, so you, yeah, and I was, I was like, you're not even my type of person to hang out with. Yeah. Like I'm very, and I'm also very straightforward. Once I, once I speak up, I'm going to say what I need to say. Yeah. And I'm like, you're not my type of person that, that I would hang out with. Like, this is not, you know, this is not my, my thing. Like, you, and so I guess, um, when we got off the bus or it's like a taxi bus thing, um, we I walk into the Airbnb and, uh, mind you, when I turn around, uh, I'm talking to the guy telling him, Hey, this is how much. You know, this is how much it, it, it cost to get uh, the taxi, pay the taxi. And I remember I literally right, like, turned to my left and her, she kicked her shoes off. And she said, I'm tired of your shit. And, and all I see is her arm went above me. It just went above me. And um, literally, and I, my eye, and I blacked up. My eyes are in and out. I, I remember, like, see, like, kept seeing myself, like, like, snap. You ever saw yourself? Like, if I went just crazy mm -hmm. one time. But then I also see myself being drugged in a ditch. Like, because I was like, man, if anything could happen to me. And mind you, this is their, they're all family. Damn. Everybody's on the trip is family. So I'm the only one that's a friend of the family. Yeah. So I saw myself, like, being, like, drugged. I saw myself, like, going through those, like, um, I like almost like God was showing, I don't know. It was just like a flash. Like, if you do, if you make this choice, this is what potentially could happen. Yeah. That's what it felt like, a premonition or something. And so then I remember getting up and I was like, okay, because I'm gonna lie, I know how to fight, but I was not about to go down. Yeah. I was like, I was not about to fight. Like I was like, no, I, I can't because it don't seem like a safe situation. Like, um, and so I was like, okay. I remember waking up. I remember getting up and I remember grabbing my suitcase, and I slowly just, just walked out the house. Like, uh, slowly just walked out the house with my with my suitcase. They had a, a guest room, 
and I um, end up sleeping in like another uh, part of the house. And um, when I woke up the next day, I couldn't see. Damn. So when I woke up, my eyes were like in and out. It was like colors. The sun was like purple, blue, and uh, my head was pounding. I could I didn't know what was going on. Um, so I had uh, met somebody from the island. They ended up giving me a ride. Not even a ride. The island is so big, you have to take a shuttle, get on another bus to go to a hospital. So I went to a clinic, and they said, oh, no, you need to go to um, the main hospital. Mm. So when I when I to get to the main hospital, you got to take a shuttle. So I get on the shuttle, get on the boat. Now, mind you, I'm, like, wobbling. I can't really walk. And I get in a taxi. Um, when I get to the hospital, they uh, said I had a concussion. Damn. So when I had when they you know gave me the gave me all the paperwork for the concussion, um, the people I was there with, I told them that you know I'm gonna file a, a, like a police report because this is this is against the law. Like it's completely against the law. You can't yeah. just you cannot just put your hands on me for no reason. Like um, especially with a rock. Yeah, you know what I'm crazy. saying? Like no, you don't get to do that. And so now we got they argue with me back and forth, saying like I was wrong for trying to do that to his people. I was wrong for trying to. Press charges. I was wrong. I should have just uh, basically. I should have just fought, or I should have just accepted it. And I remember the girl coming up to me. So this is what I guess the real issue was. I'm not sure, but this is what the I went on. It was two couples that I knew personally. The girl of the couple, she came up to me. She goes, "You don't understand my life. You don't understand our life. If we don't do what our men say, um, we get beat up." So. Um, uh, now, okay, now let's bring back, he asked me, they, uh, she asked me for a threesome and I turned him down at, in the trip, right? Now, now, uh, that was the beginning of the story. So, cause it, I brought back to remember of like why, or wondering why she did all this. But so she comes to me, she goes, you don't, you don't understand my life. If, if we, if they get turned down, like, um, or if they can't bring a woman, another woman in their bedroom, they get in trouble for that. That's, that's her life. Right. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I was like, yeah, I don't care. That that's nothing to do with me. I don't care if he whooped her ass because I told her no. That's nothing to do with me. I don't give a damn. You, she don't get to, she and and I guess maybe you know I don't know, but that nothing to do with me. So then uh, I end up uh, couldn't. I went there to the police, but you know it's an island where it's not like it's an island where like uh, it's predominantly black. Mm-hmm. So you know you're trying to file a crime with another black person, they're not gonna look at it like. It's a real crime in a sense, like oh, just brush it off, or you know, like just you know, it's it's I am just 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 talk it out, you yeah. know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't taken serious mm-hmm. as it should have been, but they still filed the report. Um, so then I end up going back home, um, and when I went back home, y'all, I had a, a mal brain fun- a mal brain function, Damn. so I had to meet with a neurologist, and I couldn't remember basic things like the time, and basic things like. Uh, like, uh, like he would ask me, like, um, I said, he would say three words, like cat, dog, hat. And he will tell me, say the middle word. And I, and I couldn't remember the middle word. Um, and then from there, he ended up recommending me to go to another neurologist where I had to get an MRI done and had to get an EEG done. EEG or EKG, something where they put the stuff mm-hmm. in your head. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, when they put the stuff in my head, I had to go uh, to sleep. So they, want, they told me to go to sleep. So I was going to sleep in and out, and um, I was having nightmares. Like mm. I was being chased, yeah. like uh, like a green. And I sort of kind of remember the the nightmare I had when I was sleep like a green monster. So I woke up out of my sleep, like 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 some, they they coming after me, like they trying to get me, like no no. And so so uh, she ended up you know um, writing down like on the um, she ended up telling me like that I was diagnosed with PTSD, but post trauma. Yeah, post trauma. Uh huh. That that's that's um, horrific. First, that's a horrific story. Um, and as soon as you started talking, it reminded me. I don't know if y'all heard this story not long ago, where this woman went on a trip with some people she thought was her friends. Mm-hmm. Two of them got into a fight while everybody stood around and video recorded. Did y'all see that on the internet? Yeah, y'all remember that story? Yeah, it was very triggering. And she wasn't even dead, but they left her there so long in that room. She ended up passing, yeah. and nobody knew what happened. And all of these so-called friends covered the story up. So you were very right in how you handled that situation, and that is, oh, it's just crazy, man. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah. How, how old were you when this happened? I was twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. That is. Have you yeah. been on a trip since? 
No. I'm, I'm sure. I, I figured. I, that's I don't why go I, on group chips. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> I do sure. not go on group trips. Even, um, yeah, no group trips. I don't mm. go on trips with people I don't know. Mm. I don't go on trips with, I don't even go, I don't even do, um, like, large crowds. Yeah. Um, you know, and then my back has to be against, so I don't like to for my back not to be where I can't see what's coming at me. Mm. Um, and then, like, I'm easily, like, uh, like I'm, I get easy, like, my anxiety comes up mm. a little bit more. But lately, it's been doing a lot better. Like I've so I found like different forms of therapy that has helped me. So boxing, yoga, and then I found like um, like I, like I was telling you, like just doing like um, well like just different stuff that kind of been helping me like stay mentally intact. So mm-hmm. becoming a life coach, studying, and then from there I had to learn more about me because yeah. again I went through that like transition of darkness. Mm-hmm. Now I had a lot of dark thoughts for a long time because you know. Somebody put their hands on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it takes a while to shake out of that. Like, I had not only like, did that you know, she put your ego. hands on you, yeah. like, it caused all of this. So, of course, your thoughts were going to be dark. Yeah, they went you know? real dark yeah. for a long time, y'all. I had to heal. Like, I had to forgive. Let me tell you, when I had to forgive this woman, it took me a while to, like, um, tell myself that at like to, like, to this point today, I can look at her and I can be like, I forgive you. And, mm. move on and walk mm. completely past her. And won't even look twice at it. won't even think twice about what happened. Um, but it didn't take until I ended up, um, I had to turn, P- I was like, you know what? It's gonna be, it's me or PTSD. So mm-hmm. let me tell you what I did, y'all. I ended up having these shirts. Um, and I took a PTSD and I turned it into a positive acronym. So I did purpose for P, transformation for T, um, S for strength, and D for determination. Mm. And I end up creating these shirts, and I was selling them. I sold out almost all my shirts. That, and I actually, all of my shirts that I ended up making, I turned it into a campaign. So ended up um, having, like, a PTSD. And I, and I shared my story. Yeah. So it was that's just one of my stories. That was the diagnosis story. Um, but, yeah, I went through different forms. of It's an actual. I was just, it's crazy that you said that because I was just about to say, that's literally, PTSD is literally what got you through the doors that Dennis was talking about all of this time. Mm-hmm. You had PTSD with every encounter since you were 16 mm-hmm. up until now, which allowed you to keep digging and go through the next chapter of your life. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy how that all tied together. And you're still going. And then the next book cover is going to be that green monster. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, I didn't even tell you that one. I didn't, and that's actually, like, when I think about PTSD, if I put, if I had to put a face to it, that's kind of what. The face. That would be, that's funny I just yeah. said that. that yeah. would, that's kind of like the face. But, yeah. 2%. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. That's it. Hey, look. Hey, you know what? I don't mind. I love working with people. Um, um, we all can eat, but for, yeah, but that's definitely. Um, so yeah. life coach, life coach. Yes. A little man. bit about that. It's one of the best decisions I ever made. Really? So yeah, because once I wanted to learn more about uh, PTSD and, and I didn't want to be the the statistic or the diagnosis. So yeah, I ended up be- becoming a, uh, first I became a PTSD counselor. Okay. And I didn't counsel people, but I just counseled myself. Okay. Um, because I was like, if I counsel myself, I can help other people. Mm-hmm. So that's really what I ended up doing. I started studying, like, what is what does it say about different people that's going through it? So now you got people go through childhood trauma. That's mm-hmm. that's a form of PTSD. Now you got people going through. So I learned all about PTSD when it comes to, like, car wrecks. People have been in car wrecks. If you've ever been through, like, a, a traumatic natural disaster, that's yeah. another form of PTSD. Um, if you ever went through something that, like, a lot of us don't even realize we're walking around with, you know, uh, some most definitely for some form of it, but we just don't really. It's it's not in the books in school that they tell you like this is what could cause it, and right. then not realizing like, oh, and that's why we have anxiety or why we have this or that. It's because we not, you know, we're not healing from these traumas that we think didn't break us or didn't try to break us, but it really did, mm-hmm. and now we're just masking it. So for me. Um, I became a counselor first to, to counsel myself. Then I became a life coach. Now I do this for other people. So I help people break barriers that are like, um, that, that keep them like bounded to, um, mental barriers that keep them bounded to like what life is supposed to, um, like what they, what their viewpoint in life is. So like if they're in a state of like depression or whatever, I'll ask real questions. Like, you know, what, where are you at with it? Like, as far as like, what are your daily habits? Okay. So if you are, you know, if you're suppressing, then what exactly are you suppressing, and, and what, and wh- from what, and then, and then from there I ask questions. Then I go back to the childhood, like you know, as far as questions about, you know, 
uh, what did you do growing up, you know? So, or what was life like growing up um, with childhood? And then that can kind of determine um, mostly their actions today. Because many times the reason why we don't really heal is because, just like we were talking about earlier, um, it's the development of the kid. It's mm-hmm. really the development of the individual and how they respond in life or what they see mm-hmm. in people, how, how they respond in their life. And then, or what, just like you said earlier, the, the responses that people have given them that kind of broke them down to where now they don't even know how to deal with the actual trauma that they're yep. dealing with. Mm-hmm. So for me, I think that that's where that life coach really can save me. And, it, and it's, and now I just have a passion to want to help other people because like, um, my grandfather, like, you know, he, when he passed, he just, he made, he told me I'm a mountain woman. Mm-hmm. Like, you are a warrior, like go after it. So I'm like, I'm a warrior. I want to connect with other warriors as I was. And that's what make, gives me that strength because it's like, okay, so, okay, you going through this. I don't, I lock arms with people. I'm a lock arms type of person. Mm-hmm. Like you cry, I'm crying, but guess what? I'm, I'm, I'm wiping your tears and we're going to come up with a plan of action to how we, how we going to get through this. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and shake you and make you feel like you got to be perfect and, and get it done. I understand what you're going through. Now let me walk this walk with you and let's go ahead and move forward on this healing process. And what does that look like? It's crazy. We just had this conversation the other day where I was like, if Faye says, Hey, <laughs> I ain't feeling it, but we need to walk through this fire. Yeah. I'm going to be right there. Like, All right, let's go. You got some water. Yeah. We're going we to walk through the fire together. Yeah. So Without the flames, we're to the path where we can just keep going. Yeah, literally. That's amazing. Yeah, that this has been an amazing story, amazing um, podcast. Uh, I want you to say the name of the book one more time. I want you to tell people where they can get it from. Also, want you to tell people where they can find you on social media. Uh, so the name of the book is Manifest Hair Girl Journal. Mm-hmm. Hair Empowerment Workbook. So it's from Hair Distress to Hair Warrior. And it's really just to help you, um, just to teach you how to reframe your thinking, your belief system, to where, like, you can go from uh, not knowing exactly the plan to getting a concrete plan, but also being grateful for your journey. Many times we don't express enough gratitude, so it also teaches you how to be grateful for the hair you had, the hair you didn't have, and the hair you're um, planning to uh, achieve. And from there, also, um, you can find me on social media at Coleman Studios, so K-O-L-E-M-A-N, and then Studios. And um, what was the last question you asked me? Uh, where they can find the book. Uh, oh, the book is on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Amazon. so Amazon.com or Wheeler Church, or you can go to Houston Book Warehouse. Um, they also hold the book there as well. Uh, and the book's amazing. Like, I, 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 I love it, and I pray y'all love it, too. Um, but yeah, thank y'all so much for having me. This has been oh, the thank best. Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate you. I, I don't you. really get to. Sh- I don't talk a lot about yeah. you know my story. So uh, man, we really good. enjoyed it. Uh, Soft spoken, very well spoken. Uh, you were open. Uh, really, really great episode. I'm I'm interested in looking at it from the other side of the camera uh, because I think it was a really great conversation. Yeah, and, and coming you. from somebody who myself, right? Coming from me who has also done some shadow work, right? Working on yourself, understanding how you got to this point, why you feel like, you know, you need to suppress this. And then also how you ended up thinking that this was the form of suppression that you, like, learned, right? Like these unintentional lessons that you've learned growing up, right? Uh, I appreciate hearing it from somebody, right? Being able to speak it and explain and also, like, how you've used it to continue to grow. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah. it's all those same ingredients that you had for your hair growth. You found another way to make more ingredients on life growth. And wow, perfect. Tied it into one. I'm really interested in, in using the, um, the oil and the soap now. You made it sound amazing without making it, without even talking about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think I was battling. I don't know if anybody like if y'all ever experienced it before, but like being stuck between two dreams. Yeah, being stuck between like, damn, should I do this? Should I do that? You know. And I felt like um, my purpose and my passion, honestly, it was two different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, once I realized my purpose, my foundation, then it led me to my passion. Yeah, I love that. I had to go through my passion are two different things. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. 
Episode 73, Just Us Pod. This is Coleman. This has been a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Much success in the future to you. Thank you. Thank you, all yep. Here's the thing. It's just us. 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 That was that was good. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was thank you so much. I feel free. Like, good. I feel more free. <laughs>